God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for making me laugh. And you and Jesus and the Holy Spirit know the story, but they don't, so I'm going to tell them. So it started out. I had my day perfectly planned today. It's the first time in years since I went bike riding. I was going to go yesterday, but the tires are flat. So John said, it's better to air them up the night before. See how they're doing. And then you can see if they're road ready the next day. So today was a flexible. Anyhow, it started out at 10 this morning, but let's just say, church family, I was worshiping Jesus on the bike trail. Let me tell you what happened. Now, this story reminds me a little bit of when John and I moved to Texas back in 2000, and we took a shortcut on I do not recall what interstate that went into Little Rock and then there was another highway that and that interstate was fairly east to west so you had to go into Little Rock and we were actually going to Searcy and I don't remember how I think it was 30 more miles into Searcy into Little Rock and then we were going to actually have to come back and get another um, highway going east, northeast. So I found this great shortcut that was going to cut, what, 20, 30 miles out? Maybe it was 10. I don't know. But it was the reason we needed that shortcut was <laughs> we got too small of a truck. The whole church came out and helped us pack the truck. Let me just go ahead and tell you the story. So the whole church came out and helped us pack the truck. And I kid you not, now John is really good with balancing the truck to make sure that the weight is on the bottom. You know, it's not top heavy. And they got everything in. <laughs> David Kitzel comes around the corner with John's bike and says, is there room enough for this? And John thought, there is no way I can open the back of that truck up without things exploding. <laughs> but he did. He managed to open it up. Cram the bike in. Shut it. And we kissed everybody. We cried. We hugged. We laughed. I mean, there were like 50 people there. Everybody from the church was there. I, c I couldn't believe it. It was a really great uh, going away party. So <laughs> we decided to spend the night at our friends at Gersten Lauer's house. <laughs> now it's still light at this point. And we're trucking along, literally. And we have our uh, Mercury Tracer in tow in the back. <laughs> and I think, I don't know how fast we were going 6570. And on our first overpass, we hit an expansion joint, and the truck started truck. And by the way, we had a cat in the cab with us. The um, the vet said <laughs> she should travel well, but just in case she doesn't, hear some kitty valium. Um, don't bother getting a cat carrier; you'll be fine. Okay, so now the cat. <laughs> is a little bit skittish because we hit this expansion joint and she, and she can't sit still. I don't remember where she was, if she was on the dashboard under John's feet behind his neck or scratching me. I don't recall. All I know is when the truck started rocking, I literally thought, I kept thinking any minute now it's going to start to stop rock. You know what I mean? It's going to, it's going to get, it's going to, balance itself. It kept going. John and I looked at each other like we're going over. We are going over. We're going over. We're going over. And all of a sudden, by the grace of God, 
<laughs> the truck starts coming back. <sighs> and so when the truck is completely steady, Don looks in the rear view <laughs> at the cars that had been on our tail and right beside us. I kid you not, they're like a, a quarter, maybe a half a mile behind us. They wanted to be as far away from us as they could. <laughs> So I spent the night at the Gerson Lowers. Now, the next morning, sorry, Jesus, you know what happened. It was Sunday. We were going to get up early, and we had this completely timed, where they were going to be eight to ten hour days. <laughs> Counting on going 65 to 75 miles an hour, and that's back when we didn't have these smartphones. So we had the trip ticks, which were, you know... I think ours was a mile long to get from Boston to Houston. Anyway, so I had to keep unfolding it a bunch of times. So I get to the Gersten Lowers at, <laughs> it's after dark at this point, because <laughs> John had to slow down to 55. That was the fastest he realized he could go if we ever hit a bumper and expansion joint so that we wouldn't go over. Okay, so that meant we were instead driving 10 to 14 hour days because of construction delays or unprecedented accidents or what have you. So now this is day three. We had stopped in Blacksburg, Virginia to spend the night with his sisters, one of his sisters friend Cindy and their family and that was really fun. And and then the second night was in Cersei at Howard and Jane Morton's house and I remember we were so tired. I don't know who said it. Okay, let me back up. So the cat, okay, I'll get to back to today in a minute. So the cat, the next day it is Sunday. We, we get up early. I said, why don't we go to church and have the church help us repack the, the, the truck? I do not feel safe driving in this truck to Texas. And John says, no, we're going to do it. We're going 55. Okay. Now, we get on the road, and the cat cannot sit still. It's on John. And, 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 and she won't come to me. She goes on John's back. She's walking on the dashboard. She'll get under his feet. And I go to get her, and she's, you know, really doing this thing. So we have to stop. And, and it, it took us a while to, to find a place that sold a cat carrier. We ended up somehow um, many, many miles away from a city that had a any type of pet store. And the pet store that we found was, you know, like it was a very small town. I think it was a, like Fort Gibson where I went to high school. About Maybe it was about 2000, so the pet store was really tiny, you know. And they probably had supplies for like, you know, five gerbils and ten dogs and the 20 cats in the, you know, it was, it was a tiny store, but they happened to have a cat carrier, but nobody obviously needed one because the one we bought was really dusty. So we dusted off, we buy that, give, well, we gave the cat the Valium, it did, it did no good. So we give her the Valium, she calms down in the cat carrier. And at night we take her out and she's calm and totally is fine. So, so we were late getting into Blacksburg got up early the next day had a really long day so by now it's we thought we'd be getting into Cersei about eight nine o'clock and it's 11 and we still have to drive into Little Rock and then back the other way <laughs> we drive west to go east northeast so I find this shortcut and, and it was a straight line on the map. And we get on that and we are humming for nine miles. He says, oh, thank you so much for finding the shortcut. <laughs> now it felt like 200 hairpin, 90 degree angle curves. It was, I do not know. I, it, it, okay, not only were they these 90 degree angle curves, but they banked the wrong way. So we had to slow almost to stop, to a stop. Every time we came to one of these, and by then, John 
was Christian swearing. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Sweat bullets. Tired. Grumpy. Thanking God that there's a full moon because it, <laughs> it would have seen far beyond our headlights. It was so dark. So by the time we get to the Nortons, they did have a jacuzzi, but we were too tired to get in it. So anyway. Now, that's what today felt like. A ton of hairpin curves banking the wrong way. So I'm going to tell this story and I may have to back up as I remember stuff because it was too much. It is too much to be born. Now, I prayed <laughs> that God would start giving me funny stories. Now, I do have a lot of funny stories, a lot. And so I'm going to be telling them. So you're going to have to buckle up your seat belts and we're going to go on a ride. So <laughs> today, this morning, let me think, how did it start? Okay, this is to the best of my knowledge and belief, <laughs> legalese. Now, I would blame COVID, but it's my own fault that I haven't been working out as much as usual. So I, for a while I said I had the COVID-19, but it's really been more like 25. I've at least taken four solid pounds and a few inches off, so I'm heading in the right direction. And I'm at a, a certain age where I've decided to use entropy as, uh, as motivation, as I'm going to use it for me. <laughs> you know, they say it's everything's going downhill. Well, guess what? For every, you know, one of the other laws of physics is for every reaction, there's an equal and opposite reaction, which means, yes, as I move forward, there is an equal and opposite push back. But as I'm going forward, what I am moving away from I have an equal and opposite reaction, I'm sorry, that is pushing me forward. Get what I'm saying? Okay, go look it up on YouTube. They'll explain it better. So I'm using entropy. <laughs> Whether it's age or weight, whatever you want to call it. And it's, it's working. It's helping me get back into shape. So I haven't been bike riding in years. And... <clears throat> My bike was so dusty, it had cobwebs in in the spokes. So I, I, I have to dust it off and I fill my water bottle up. Um, let's see, what else do I do? Make sure that my headphones are, in, in, and just so you know, I'm listening to headphones, but I'm very, very low so I can hear people. But I need to have a little motivation while I'm biking. So if everything's gassed and juiced up and I go to stick <laughs> my bike in the back end and it takes me a while because I didn't realize how weak I was. I've, I've gotten strong on my lower body but my upper body needs a little more. So I finally get the bike in the car and the trunk won't close. It's one of those automatic ones and it will not close. I'm punching the button uh, 10 times. Then I come to the front of the car. I'm punching the button. It, tend, it will not close. So I decide to close it manually. I close it manually and I decide to test it to see if it's going to open. It did not open manually. I thought, how am I going to get the bike out? I do not want to run today. I have, I've been running a lot. My knees need a break. My ankles need a break. And I, I don't want to get any fractures. I really would like to bike, dear Jesus, today. So, let me think how this all went down. I'm going to have to back up at some point to, to, to tell you some other parts. Well, this was a disaster. So I look on my, my schedule and I realize I can change some things around. I, I call um, a dealership before I drive down there to see if... Actually, no, no, no. I take it back. I didn't. The first dealership. I just went down. I thought, you know, what can it be? A sensor? You know, they can just switch it out. So I get down there, and the guy, by the time I get down there, now, there was some other stuff going on uh, in between 10 o'clock, because by the time I got 
went down there. I do not recall what happened. Maybe later in the story it'll all come back. <laughs> all I know is I got to the dealership at 12. <laughs> I think I had to go in and... What did I have to do? I had to go in. I had to go back into the house and do... What did I have to do? Oh, the computer. I was supposed to take the computer in. So, before I, I took off to ride on this bike trail, which I thought would be easy to find, I didn't want to ride on a dirt one. I wanted to ride on a concrete one. And there was a whole thing with the computer. I'm not even going to go into it. That's what made me late. So, I get down to the dealership at noon, and they say... We ain't got no more appointments. You got to make an appointment. I said, when's the next one? Oh, let me look. It's tomorrow. I said, can't you just check? It's just a sensor. I said, well, it could be a motor. And there are two, there are two sides. And it's $400 for each side. I thought, what's the point in having technological convenience if it costs you an arm and a leg? And I'm thinking, you know... I want one of those really old 1940s cars that are sturdy and mechanically driven where, you know, maybe I can learn to fix it one day. So this time I decided to call the dealership before driving all the way up there. And it took a while because the phone hung up, I think. I can't remember. I think it was hanging up. I finally get a service, but no, every time they connect me to someone and go to voicemail, I think I finally, the fourth call, I got a live person, and they must have been in the shop because it was really loud. They were not at a desk, and I said, um, this is what's going on. I said, well, bring it on up, <laughs> so I do, and uh, no, no, they make an appointment for 245. Now, I have other errands to run, meanwhile. So I'm thinking, I'm gonna go, and, and I like to look kinda decent when I run my errands. So I decide to go home, I'm gonna shower, I'm gonna look decent to run my errands. I'll at least look kinda cute on the bike. I'll wear waterproof mascara, I'll wear my sunglasses, and everything will be copacetic. So, I go run my errands, and I decided I wanted a little Dunkin' Donuts on the way. But it was not to be on the way to the dealership. I just barely squeaked in at 2.45, I said, I'll get the Dunkin' Donuts on the way out. I just really had that hankering for that New England hazelnut iced coffee with, I used to have um, cream and sugar. Now, I have um, half and half hazelnut sugar-free, sugar-full, extra oat milk, which has a scrumptious taste, and about five cubes of ice. I don't like it because they'll fill the whole thing with ice, and you literally, I think it's 20% liquid by the time you drink it. I'm like, three sips and it's gone, and that's a large. So anyway, if I want my, my bag to last, okay. So I get to the dealership. <laughs> three guys come out and they come to assess the situation and it, and they walk back there and it opens manually they said is this what was broken I said yes how did you do that and they said we just right here what were you doing I said I was doing that and they said well sometimes there's a little glitch if there's you know something in the way or I there's a <laughs> <laughs> a story for another time about now I was looking in the rear view and somehow I ended up running into uh, a trailer with my friend Donna we used to live in Boston and they lived in all over the place now and they live in Chicago and they're gonna be down in Texas but she was with me she'll witness I did not see that trailer it was in my blind spot so it nicked my bumper on the left and so the guy said, <laughs> oh, okay, and then 
I, not a day later, I'm driving down the highway and I hear this BAM! And I thought somebody had hit my, literally had hit my car, it, it moved. And nobody was anywhere, so I knew there was Houston debris, which happens and falls off people's trucks or whatever. And, and it had ricocheted something. When I got to the grocery store and I was walking out to the car, I thought, what the heck is that on the back of my car, in the back left, right above that nick? It looked like two huge, like, cat scratches. And I said, oh, that's what happened. Somebody hit something and it ricocheted and it did a nice little nick in the back. Well, thank God I didn't get, get it fixed because we bought a new house. And so we went to show um, Rick and Donna back then. Yeah. Yeah, they were back again. Were they back? No, no, no. They weren't back. No. It was just me this time. They did come back and we went out later, but had nothing to do with the bumper. I'm backing out of the new new driveway. I'm looking both sides in my my left, my right rear view, and I'm looking down at the camera. I don't know how I missed it, but there's a gray truck. Bam! So now I have a big, like, volleyball size indent above where the cat scratches are. And now those cat scratches are rusty. We're, we're waiting to make sure <laughs> before we take it in to get fixed. This has been a few months. So uh, John said, now he, the realtor was in front of me and then John was in front. He looks in the rear view, he said, I saw the truck move. So the two guys come out because <laughs> they're building a house across the street from the house that we bought. And thank God it was a work truck, and it was really beat up. <laughs> so, by the way, the trailer, the short story was, the guy said, let's wait till my mom, my wife gets home. This is her trailer. She looks at the trailer. What I had done was I had knocked a light off, but she looked at it, and she said, I can weld it back on. Don't worry about it. Don't call the insurance company. So there, then I had the cat scratch, ricochet, doodad, and then the volleyball indent. And which these two guys said, don't worry about it. <laughs> I don't see anything. It just added to another dent to their beautiful gray truck. Okay, so the guy at the dealership says, it's very possible that maybe that scratch did something with the sensor so you might have a glitch until you get that fixed. So. I said, thank God, because I did not want to spend $800 to, to fix that door. And he said, that's okay, we'll just charge you $1,200. I said, can I give you a tip? He said, sure. I said, plant your corn in April. <laughs> he said, I'll do it. So now, I'm a happy camper. Okay, and what time was it by then? 